So the Prama Ultra 3 jacket managed to survive my shower test. However, let's see how the jacket performs in the real life environment up on the hillside. Before I crack on, I will say I took this jacket out last week. It was too wet and windy to actually do the review, but it was a good test. So today it's the exact opposite. It's nice and dry and crisp and cold. So I've got a bit of a mix going on here. But anyways, I'll get ready and then we'll set off uphill. The Paramo Ultra 3 jacket is essentially a waterproof garment. However, they don't use the same system as you would expect in a more traditional waterproof jacket where you get the waterproof membrane that's meant to be breathable. They do something called the directional analogy garment. And essentially what it's doing is it's like an animal fur. It's pumping your sweat back out, keeping you drier and it's obviously keeping the water out. Now, it's not just a waterproof jacket though. They're made for cold and wet weather. If you're a bit of a cold potato though, there's absolutely no reason why you can't wear one of these jackets right throughout the year. I've got quite a few hill walker and friends who wear these right through the year, but if you run fast and hot, you might just find this a little bit too hot for the summer months. So for me, it's ultimately a winter jacket. <laughs> Honestly folks, I'm not having much luck. I'll admit it was too warm for the jacket further down, so I've never done much filming. Then when I got up to the summit, it was absolutely perishing. The wind chill dropped below minus six degrees. So um, the jacket's back on. I'm nice and warm, not too hot, so it's perfect at the moment. We're at the sort of shoulder season, it's mid-March, so uh, yeah, it is what it is. Anyways, what I'll do is I'll get a wee bit off the mountain, and then once I get out of this wind, I'll talk you through the jacket. The best ball in the world, I always want to do my reviews outdoors, as it happens. I think to review the jacket, it's just going to be simpler, just to run you through it inside. So let's get stuck right in. Right, so, as you see, we've got the jacket zipped up at the moment. This has got a little plastic pull for pulling it up and down, obviously. But what's neat about it is this just folds in and clips into place and it stops that rattling about in the wind. That's a neat little feature. You've got two toggles here. These are for tightening up your hood, which we'll move on to now. If I turn it around, you have another toggle here for tightening the hood. And you've got the wired peak. And you've got little pop buttons here, which if you want to store the hood away, you just fold it into itself and these buttons pop in the inside there and then you just sort of creates a collar rather than a hood. It's a really good fitted hood, it's, um, it doesn't affect your side vision either, which I found was really good and it keeps you warm. Right, so moving down to the middle of the jacket, you can see here we've got two Napoleon pockets. These sit nicely between your sternum strap and your hip belt so you can get access to these pockets at any time without having to take your rucksack off. So the left hand pocket is deep enough to put an OS map in there or a Harvey's map depending on which one you use. On your right hand side you've got a Velcro pocket which is ideal for maybe putting in your, your mobile phone or your compass. You can see there it's got this little plastic um, tab which you could attach your compass to as well so you don't lose it. Inside the jacket there's a filler two pockets. You can see here we've got one small one, both mesh, and on this side you've got a deeper pocket which I think you could get a map in there no bother as well. Moving to the bottom of the jacket we've got a filler two hand pockets here so that takes the pocket count up to six. I felt these could have been a little bit deeper it's not a minor niggle, you can still get your hand in there or a, a glove in each pocket and as you can see it's obviously a double zip as well. You also have two venting zips for your armpits at either side obviously. So if you're feeling the heat you can open them up. You also have an inside toggles here just to tighten these up and obviously give you some protection from the snow and wet weather and there's also buttons and the inside as well so you could have it buttoned up but the zip down just for a little bit more venting if you wish. 
So there you have it. That is the main features of the, rucks uh, the rucksack, <laughs> the jacket. Uh, really nice material, nice on the skin. Uh, like I said earlier on in the video, I can get away with wearing a base layer with this jacket and I'm warm enough and that's pretty much right through the winter. If I turn the jacket around, there's not much to see, just got the toggle there that I mentioned earlier. There you go. When it comes to the care and maintenance of your Paramo jacket, you do have to wash these a little bit more regular than your typical waterproof jacket. And the reason for this is the directional membrane in this can pump out up to 80% of your body's sweat. However, over time, wearing the jacket constantly, the sweat build up plus oil from your skin will impair the jacket's performance quite a bit. So you have to wash these maybe once every two to three months and you would use a tech wash and a synthetic wash. If you start to notice that the jacket isn't beading as much or it's not waterproof, after you've done a tech wash, you also would run it through a TX Direct. I'm not going to bore you with the instructions because these are obviously on the back of the bottle and of course on the Paramo website. So you can get all the information there for caring for these. But as you get used to the jacket, you'll sort of gauge yourself. It depends on obviously how often you use the jacket, what sort of conditions you're going out on. If you're going out in gale force wind and rain all the time, then you might need to wash it a bit more regular. But anyways, what we'll do now is I'll give you a summary of the jacket and we'll go over the pros and cons. Nice one. <laughs> so what we'll do now is I'm just going to touch briefly on the sizing based on my own experience. So I'm 5 foot 10 with a slim build and Pramo sent me this in small and it's very generous small to be honest. I'm usually a medium but there's plenty of room underneath to wear a thicker fleece if it's really cold. So yeah, it's worth bearing in mind the sizing is generous. Paramo do have a sizing guide on their website, so do go in, look at the sizes, measure yourself up, or obviously go down to one of the shops and try one on for yourself. Um, this jacket, in the small, weighs 800 grams, and I know some of you will probably be thinking, well, that's just a little bit on the heavy side. But bear with me, you've got to remember, this is basically a two-in-one. You've got a waterproof built-in with a warm mid-layer. Because of that, it is more suited to the cold and or wet weather. It's, for me, it's predominantly a winter jacket. However, if you run cold, then you probably might get away with wearing this all year round. I think I said before, eh, a lot of my hill walking friends will wear these three, six, five days a year. Eh, but it's just for me, it's just a little bit too hot. So that's maybe one of the negatives. These also retail at £310 on the Pramo website. Obviously, you can shop around the retailers and you might find a better deal elsewhere. They are PFC free, so they are more environmentally friendly as well. They're not putting out chemicals or plastics in with the wash. So that's always good to know. So these jackets are ideal for the sort of stuff that I do. Uh, hill walking, backpacking, um, weekend while camping if you like. So they're suited for all these sort of activities. Otherwise, that's all I've got time for. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit the thumbs up. Any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, catch you later. Cheers.